All right, everybody, good evening. Like I said in class, today the video will be only about this um, math problem, and we're going to use this math problem as an example to solve math problems like it in the future. So this whole video is going to be me solving a math problem. We're going to use the four-step process to solve this math problem, and the problem reads, a pool ball leaves a 0.6 meter high table with an initial horizontal velocity of 2.4 meters per second. Predict the horizontal distance between the table's edge and the ball's landing location. So, what we're going to do first, like always, is draw a picture. I've zoomed way in because my handwriting is so bad. So first step, draw a picture. It's going to be a pool table. There's going to be a ball on top. And it says that the horizontal velocity is... Oh, it's not how I zoom out. Erase that really quickly. Um, it says that the horizontal velocity is 2.4 meters per second. So I'm going to zoom back in. This is 2.4 meters per second. And the height of the pool table is 0.6 meters. All right, so that's... Step one is done. I've drawn my picture. Moving on to step two, I'm going to make my list of variables. So for step two, and for these projectile problems, what we're going to do for our variable list, remember, is separate them into the x quantities and the y quantities. Because those vectors are completely independent of one another, we can separate them out, except for time which is its own dimension and therefore it gets its own space. Our x quantities could be our position in the x direction that the ball has changed or our velocity in the x direction that that ball has and we already know that one it's 2.4 meters per second. In the y direction we might know delta y which is the change in height or the change in the uh, displacement in the y direction and that is 0.6 meters. We already know that as well. And over here as well is our acceleration due to gravity, and that's negative 9.81 meters per second. All right, so step two is done. Let's move on to step three. Oh, you can hardly see my step one over there. Step three, we have to choose which of these two equations we're going to use. The first equation is delta x is equal to the velocity in the x direction multiplied by the time and the other equation is delta y is equal to g times time squared over 2. Now, my, the question is asking me to solve for delta x. What is the, the total distance that the pool ball lands away from the pool table? Unfortunately, I don't know the distance and I don't know the time. So that's two variables in this equation, so I'm unable to use it. However, I can find one of those variables using my other equation, my, my y equation, because I'm given the height of the pool table and I know the acceleration to gravity. So I'll use this equation here to solve for time, and I can use that time in the, in the first equation. So let's do that in step four of our four-step process, actually solving for the, for the equation. <clears throat> um, so delta y is equal to g times time squared over 2. And I know that my delta y is 0.6 meters, and my g is negative 9.81 meters per second squared times time squared all of this over 2. Mm. Because I want to get this time by itself I have to remove these other numbers that are stuck onto it with multiplication and division. I'm just going to get rid of this 2 first so I'll multiply both sides by 2 and that will leave me on one side with 1.2 meters, and on the other side, negative 9.81 meters per second squared times time squared. And then to get rid of this 9.81, one, 
meters per second squared, I have to divide both sides by negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Negative. Um, over here it cancels, this cancels with this. Over here I multiply by the reciprocal of the divider, so this is on the bottom and this is secretly on the top. So those, those cancel and 1.2 divided by negative 9.8 is equal to negative 0.12 seconds squared equals time squared. Then I can use my calculator and I have to square root both of these sides. So I will square root, where's my, there it is, square root this side and square root this side. The seconds squared ends up getting canceled. When I put in 0.2 0.12 uh, negative 0.12 seconds squared into my calculator, I get 0.35 seconds is equal to my time. Excellent. Now that we have this piece of information, we can go back to our step two, which was the the uh, writing down the variables, and I can put in my time as 0.35 seconds. And I can then use this in this other equation. Sorry, I was briefly interrupted by the dogs. Um, as I was saying, now that we have time, we've got our velocity in the x direction, and we've got our time, so we can use this equation here to solve for our delta x and actually solve for our whole problem. So I'm going to do it just directly below. It's not as complicated as the other question, the other equation, so it shouldn't take up that much space. Delta x is equal to v of x times t times t. Um, our delta x we don't know, but our velocity in the x direction is um, 2.4 meters per second and our time is 0.35 seconds. Our seconds end up canceling. Um, if you multiply these two together, you get 0.83 meters as our total distance. Um, so again, the four-step process, I first I drew a picture, and then I wrote my variables down. I then chose which equation I needed to use. I solved for that equation. I got new information, which I then put into my variable list. Then I used this new information to solve the problem and end up with the right answer. Here it is. Um, if you guys have any questions, we're going to be working on it a little bit again on Wednesday, so don't overly stress about this. But if you need some practice, try the rest of those problems that I gave you today in class, and good luck.